I'm Jacqueline Hine. My road name is Patches Onassis. This is Tic Tac, the teardrop trailer, and Liesel Diesel, the diesel beetle. I've always just wanted to kind of hit the road. I've never been one to sit in one spot. In 2007, I ended up taking the motorcycle course and I ended up getting a 2007 electric ride. So like one of the biggest bikes you can get, uh, Harley, right? And I was like, all right, this is it. How can I hit the road and have a motorcycle? You know, when you live in one place, you kind of do the same loops on the motorcycle over and over and over again. Well, I got tired of doing the same loops and I don't like to sit in one space. So I started Googling, you know, well, do I get a class C in a trailer or how do I do this? And I came upon these teardrop trailers and they said that you could pull it with your motorcycle. So I called up my dad and I was like, okay, so I want to get this teardrop trailer and I'm going to pull it with my motorcycle. And my dad said, you can't do that. You need an oil cooler. Okay, so Google, 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 found myself an oil cooler, put it on the bike. I said, now what? He goes, darn it. All right. <laughs> when I first hit the road, I would go 400 to 600 miles a day. I mean, just ride. That's all I wanted to do. And then the bike got old. You get the weather, you get the cold, then you have the bad roads. And then I started to get into really staying in one spot. You know, how do I make this more comfortable and be okay with hanging out in one spot? On the motorcycle, I would get close to 30 miles per gallon. And when I looked for a car, I wanted something that would be comparable. With the diesel Beetle, with the pulling the trailer, I get about 30. Without the trailer, I get close to 40 miles per gallon. I put a lift on it, about three inches, and I put all-terrain tires on it. So I have the ability to go a whole new world in comparison to what I could on the motorcycle. So this is Tic Tac. It's a little guy rascal, but I took the name off and put Tic Tac on there. Four and a half feet wide, six and a half feet long. I can sit up straight. I can change my clothes in there. I can do anything you need to do in there. A lot of people ask if I'm claustrophobic in there. Not at all. It's comfy. You know, it's like your own little nook. When I originally bought it, it had cupboards and the shelf in the back. No kitchen in the back because it was pulled by a motorcycle and so you have to be concerned about weight. I didn't like the cupboards because they were too small. Plus you hit your knees on them every time you get into bed. And the back shelf constantly broke and there was no place for storage. If you look inside, we took out the cupboards and the shelf. So I can actually, when laying in bed, look straight out at whatever view I'm in. And then I have a little shelf here where I can cook. And I just use a hiker burner um, if I have to cook anything. It's very rarely I cook. I'm not a big cook. That's not my thing. This little side here, the mattress doesn't come all the way over here. So I can put bags and storage of stuff on this side. I like to crochet and macrame and stuff. So that's generally what's in there taking up space, but it doesn't weigh much, so it's okay. Up front would be more of like food utensils, medications like Aleve or something. Anything I use every day is usually on the top shelf or it's in the car, which is very little. Like a fork spoon combo thing and that's about it. And so this is dog food, this is chicken food, then this is my food. I don't have refrigeration, so pastas always work real well. And then I kind of shove some things down in here. This tent thing, my solar shower, a little broom, some ramen noodles, things that I would like to get to easily, but I don't necessarily need it all the time. Everything is reachable because it's not a big space. It came with a house battery and a solar panel, so there's a solar jack and a 30 amp on the other side, but I don't use that anymore. It took forever to charge the battery. So I had a friend who got me this, which is an electric generator, and it has your regular plugs in it and USBs. And so I can charge a computer, my phone, and I can use the solar panel to charge this. I can use the solar panel to charge my phone directly. And then I use Lucy lights. The house lights that came into this only had one option, really bright. These each have like three different settings you can put it on. It used to have one of those not so fantastic fans. It kept breaking, it rattled so much. And so I can just open it up and it's a vent and I can look straight out above and I can look straight out when that's open, straight out in front of me. On the motorcycle, there's like no personal space, right? And as a woman, we prefer the personal space. Like I'd sit outside my trailer and then everybody thought that was like open time for people to come and ask questions. So I never had any private time. Got to the point I couldn't even sit inside. People would knock on the trailer 
and to try to get me out to ask me questions. My friend suggested that it's because I don't have an outside closed space. So I got this little clam tent so that I can zip it up and I can even like put a blanket up to show people I'm not open. And Yoska and Esmeralda, my chicken, can run loose in here and we can hang out together. It's super simple to set up and take down. I can do it by myself and it takes, I don't know, three minutes or something. You pull it out till it pops, all of them, then you come in the middle and you pop up the top. And then when you're done, you pull down the top and push in all the things and stick it in the bag and go. If I'm just here this afternoon, I would put this up as long as it's not too windy. I'd put it up, tie it down and sit. And then by this evening, I'll take it down and, and move on to somewhere else. I carry all my water. I have three of these three gallons. The five gallons are really heavy. And the three gallons give you a lot more than a gallon, but they're doable heavy. Ezzy, she also has this little pin of sorts. So if we aren't somewhere where I can put this out, she can still be outside and stretch her legs. She most of the time travels in the crate, but that's because on the motorcycle, she used to ride on the crate, which was her favorite place to lay eggs as we're driving down the highway. The chicken is very easy. It's a silky chicken and they are a lot like dogs. It's a chicken, so she obviously poops a lot, but I have a little diaper I crocheted for her. And so she'll be loose in the trailer. Sometimes she'll sleep, you know, loose in the corner. And then in the morning she comes up to my face and kind of makes these sounds so that I wake up in the morning. And, and these two will hang out together. She'll just sit right on top of Yoska. I mean, they're just adorable. But with any pet, it's a commitment. Because you know what? It does smell like chicken sometimes. Sometimes it smells like chicken poop and you just like roll down the window and life moves on. All right, so like I said, the car is new, so things are settling. What I really looked for was a car that had as little electronics as possible. I do not want a car with one of those key fobs where you push the button. I mean, that's a, a given. You're gonna be stranded in the middle of nowhere and there's nothing you can do about it, right? The electric windows are not my favorite, but nowadays you can't really find anything else. People have been trying to teach me to drive a stick shift my entire life and I could never get it. And then I thought, well, I've never had one. We look at the car and I somewhat took it around the block because again, I didn't know how to drive a stick. But on the way home, I learned. <laughs> it was about 60 miles away from where I was staying. So, you know, it's the best way to learn, is, you know, when you gotta. This is Yoska's seat. He rides in here and he has his own little seat belt of sorts. And then Esmeralda with her crate, either she sometimes rides here on the floorboard or she rides right behind the seat there. Then I have clothes. I just have to pull the seat forward. Water usually is stored behind this seat. Keep the weight distributed correctly. The stuff I use the least comes back this way because I can't open this if the bike is attached and I don't want to take the bike down all the time. My bicycle helmet's back in here. Some tools that I probably wouldn't use unless I took the bike off. Stuff to change my own oil. That's about it. I mean, I don't own much. It seems like a lot to me though. When I take it all out, I'm like, boy, this is a lot of stuff. And so every time I'm somewhere like at a friend's house or something, I get rid of probably a garbage bag full of things that I end up giving to Goodwill. When you bring something in, you have to get rid of something. That's just the way it, it kind of goes. Safety really hasn't been a huge concern, but I know it's a concern for a lot of people. Some of the things that I have learned is that you need to take up your space. You know, your confidence, even if it's pretend confidence, which happens to me all the time. Um, I stand my ground and people will generally give you space. And I have stayed in shady Walmart parking lots and in places I probably shouldn't have, truck stops that were like in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> and, but no one has really disrespected me to the point that I felt unsafe. My personal bubble has been popped many a times, but I don't make myself vulnerable and I stand my ground. I mean, you just gotta be a tough broad. That's just what you have to be. <laughs> my favorite quote is the only way to live in an unfree world is to become so absolutely free that your very existence is an act of rebellion. You don't have to do it like everybody else does it. I obviously didn't. You don't have to be a van dweller because everybody's a van dweller. You know, if you feel that you want to ride your tricycle from California to New York, then go do it. Anything's possible and don't let anyone tell you you can't do it because let me tell you, the world told me I couldn't do what I've done. 
and I did it, and I did it for six and a half years on a motorcycle. And people I'm sure will tell me I can't pull a trailer with this diesel beetle. Well, I am, so, <laughs> you know, whatever.